Your reverse light's out. Reverse light's out? Yeah. Man, that thing's been out for like three years. Is it still out? Seems like your muffler's out too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that actually is a good thing to have right here. Yeah, should be good to go. Yeah, I guess we're gonna have to go to the dump first though. We gotta make a little bit of room for this scaffold. I've heard people call a buck of scaffolding different things. Some people have called it a bunk, but I think that's... <laughs> that's um, like a bed. Yeah, I think that's something you sleep in. I don't know, buck, bunk, whatever. I think I think we all know what we're talking about, so I don't know that it matters. Oh, what are we talking about right now? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't really know. All right, let's go to work. All right. Cardinal coffee. We're here. Uh, should we look at the radar before we get all those tools out and stuff? It's it's just misty. It's like misty river. No, but if it, <laughs> whatever that, if there was a huge storm coming out, we wouldn't be able to tell because it's socked in. No, I think we're good, man. Okay, I don't know. time to work. It could be raining. We're at the house, and as you can see, we have all the exterior framework done. So now we're going to do the interior walls in the main living area, which is not many. It's only two walls, Ray, or three maybe. It's like a center wall between the kitchen and the stairs, and then one between the stairs and the bathroom, and then an end wall on that. And then we can go up with this next floor framing. That's what we're gonna do today. You can see how wet the floor is here. <clears throat> that means you can't chalk lines because chalk doesn't work when it gets wet. So I mean, it would one time. <laughs> it would one time. So in order to get these bottom plates straight, which is what we want, especially in here where it's a stairwell against it, I'm having to just shoot the ends and then do this, which is laser eye siding the plate and making sure it's straight before I shoot it to the floor. Um, if it weren't straight, I'll show you what I'd do. Wherever it's bowed, say if I needed to knock it that way, I'd shoot a toenail into the joist like that, and then I'd hit it. And you can move the plate over. So that's a good trick if you're working with wet conditions, which we try not to do usually. We're gonna get a couple um, food trucks. I noticed you're still stuck on this air gun yeah. thing, and it's, it's leaking like crazy it, over here. It is leaking in a little. there. So, now. Let's do that. No, he's, <laughs> he's pinched, pinched, off. pinched me off. I just want to take a second to film the sounds of the airline. Let's just everybody be quiet. <laughs> See, that's like the same thing I look up on Amazon to go to sleep to. <laughs> like the rain sounds, leaking air from an airline at a job site sounds. No wonder you don't do anything during the day. <laughs> he's always half asleep. All right, let's get to work. <laughs> Like usual, we're riffing a little bit as we frame this thing. We're kind of on the fly, making sure everything's gonna work right. I'm sorry, what was that word? Riffing, it's like when you make up the words to a song as you're singing it. <clears throat> so that's <laughs> what we're doing. I'm looking at this. You know, you better Google that <laughs> thing, dude. So what we're looking at is originally I had the washer dryer here, but exterior wall means we'll have to frame in another three and a half inches to get that plumbing out of the insulation layer or inside the insulation layer. So I'm gonna do a little flipperooski here. We're gonna do a toilet in the very back, cause that's more private. Then we're gonna do the vanity and then the washer dryer here where this is an interior wall. And originally, let me back up cause everybody probably thinks I'm crazy. Uh, I designed the house. Originally this whole room wasn't here. 
Okay, this little entry room. This was sort of a last minute add on to the design. So originally it didn't matter where in here the washing machine went, there was no interior wall like we have now. And that's why I wanna switch it. So just, you know, things to think of while you're framing, riffing, if you will. We make some of this stuff bomb, dude. <laughs> There's no internet. Uh, Riff, there you go. Perform a monologue or a spoken improvisional, see, on a particular subject. So framing, improvise. Bingo. Oh, we're riffing all day long. We're also holding this door as tight as we can that way because the washer and dryer is only like 32 inches deep, but then you have that hose behind it, the dryer hose. Yeah, that's a problem. So sometimes they stick out like 38 inches, and we just want to make sure that it doesn't stick out into the door opening. That would be the worst case scenario. So. The worst. That'd be ripping. Since I just made a change to the plan, I want to make sure the plumber gets the memo. So I'm going to write the changes on the floor, on the subfloor. And one good thing about this X-Factor subflooring is that you can see marks really well and they stay very legible for a long time. So we're going to mark out toilet, 15 and one half center, all right there, toilet. And we are going to go 31 half. And then we can do center of a 36 vanity. And that will leave us three feet for the washer and dryer. So that'll work perfect. Yeah. We're building these interior walls. Now the location of these interior walls it's a little bit multifaceted as far as why they are where they are. They are providing the space for the rooms down here and this downstairs, and they have to be the right shape and size to be what is desirable. But also, they are placed strategically so that they line up with the center point of the house to support the floor system for the upper floor and also the walls that go upstairs. Sometimes you want walls that line up, say, for plumbing, so you actually have a way to get your mechanical stuff from upstairs to the downstairs. If you don't provide a way for it, sometimes it just can't work out. So there's a lot of strategery. Strategery, is that a word? Yeah. I think it's a game actually, isn't it? <laughs> We're just gonna demonstrate really quick why you need bracing uh, on this wall. Before you put a floor system on it, let's demonstrate here. Uh, one, two, three. So you can see that that's all over the place. This brace is gonna lock it into position. We're gonna plumb it before we do that. And, and these are just, flushed. They're, they're not plumb until we plumb it. So let's put her a little this way to me, uh, a little back. Hit it, John. All right, so now let's demonstrate. So you can see that that's really important step here is to get your walls plumbed and braced before you add weight to the top of that. Lunchtime? It's, it's pretty much lunchtime. We built three walls. <laughs> I mean, we got four in. <laughs> I think it's gonna work. This video is sponsored by Keeps, and Keeps has been a longtime sponsor of this channel, which we really appreciate. I first started noticing signs of hair loss myself when I was about 35 years old, and it kind of got worse and worse and worse till I was 39, at which point I started using Keeps daily, and now I have most of my hair back, which is awesome. Have you noticed a difference? I have. It's actually noticeable. Yeah, actually, and, let's uh, show. Let's show everybody. Oh yeah, I was gonna yeah. say you got your hat on there. Yeah. So, how about that? Look at that. Well, I, 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 was, I was getting worried too because you're just a little bit older than me, and I thought <laughs> whatever happens to you is gonna happen to me, and we're brothers. So, well, it's actually only about two out of three guys over the age of 35. Not every single guy, but if you're having some kind of hair loss, I would highly recommend trying keeps to keep the hair you have. Or in my case, I actually regrew the hair, which is awesome. So Keeps will deliver your hair loss medication right to your front door. You order it online and you can get a three month supply at a time. They have great customer service. It's easy to do, it takes me about 30 seconds a day. So if you're ready to take action like I did, you can go to keeps.com slash Perkins. They'll give you 50% off your first order. That's keeps.com slash Perkins. Check it out, you got nothing to lose. Right now, the guys are setting up our Three. seven foot tall scaffolding. Our other stuff's only five, right? Yeah, yeah. Normal stuff? Yeah. You're gonna show us how to do that by yourself, but this stuff is a two-man operation, and uh, it's gonna get us to the top of the wall plate really easy in one <laughs> buck. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's too high. Yeah, I, I'm thinking this is too tall. I think it's, we should put the five tall. foot. It's pretty tall. 
pretty tall. We're going to be bending down to do this instead of just... I mean, if we use these big ones, we're probably going to be, like, bending down to do it. That's exactly what I just said. Yeah, hey, I think this is too tall. Though. You know what I should Exactly. Do? I should weld in another bar right here on this well, thing. Do we want to be then it would be five down? feet. That's the same as our other we'll scaffolding. All right, let's get the other scaffolding. <laughs> If you're setting up scaffold by yourself, here's the key that I think makes it the easiest, is to get the end of your brace attached to both points of one scaffold frame. We call this a frame. Okay, now the brace is on there because what that brace can do is actually be a kickstand. So I'm hands-free now. Uh, I've seen some people try to adjust attach the top of this one and then try to get the top of that one. And then you got this thing that does this <laughs> and it's farther apart than you can reach with your hands. So good luck trying to hold it all together. All right, now I can just get my other one stood up here. And this probably all sounds like common sense. I hope it is. I always go by getting the top one engaged when I go to get my second piece. And even though it's not really done, it, it will stand here all by itself. And all you gotta do is just bring this other one into alignment and boom, there it is. Now the thing will stand here on its own while you get the second brace put in and it's it's pretty much pretty easy. Oh, but let me let me say this. Getting the, getting the brace on or off, okay? That can be a struggle too. I don't know why, it shouldn't be. I always like to hold it right in the middle, okay? It's not pinching my fingers. Uh, so I'm gonna hold it in the middle, all right? You see? It's still in the middle. All right, boom. One. There's the other. I'm still holding it in the middle the whole time I did that. So I've got good balance on it and it's not gonna pinch me. All right, I know that's pretty common sense, you're thinking, I bet. And it is, but that's how I do it. And that's, I do it in the exact opposite order when I take it apart, okay? Let me show you how to take a brace off without hurting yourself. I, I'm serious, people, I don't know. I mean, am I crazy or what? All right, to take a brace off, before I do anything, I'm gonna grab it in the middle, because that's where it's, when it comes loose, I'm gonna be holding it, okay? Middle, always, hand in the middle. Middle. Okay? Yeah, that, that can hit you in the face if you don't hold it in the right place. If you hold it in some other place, and then it goes to close or it's out of balance, it's gonna wanna close. Here, it's neutral. It, does, it doesn't wanna close, it doesn't wanna open, it just wants to be nothing neutral zero so I don't uh, day, I just these guys have nothing. been done for five minutes so <laughs> all right well whatever <laughs> i need to uh now that we have our walls built in this area and just fyi we do have some walls over there that aren't built in the master bedroom what we're going to do is double top plate the walls that's what they're doing up here and that gives us the ability to put a floor joist anywhere on the top plate not just on top of the studs, so that's good. Pro tip here is that you do not have to get up there to measure each double top plate. You can do that on the floor because the distance should be the same because you cut your top and your bottom plates the same length, hopefully. So I want this to overlap the outside wall because the plate underneath does not. And I want it to overlap this wall because the plate up there does not. And to measure that, we can do it on the floor. It should be the same. So if I get my tape straight enough here, mm -hmm. you can see that that's nine foot seven, which is what it should be because this is a nine foot wall on the inside of our stairwell. So that's a pro tip. You can do this all on the floor to get your numbers and then get up there and put them on. Here's something Eric didn't tell you about top plating. I'm gonna tell you right now. When you're nailing your top plates, it's best to nail over the stud below so that your guys drilling for wiring and plumbing are not gonna hit nails. Yep. Trust me, they will be appreciative. Let's just say that our stud below is right there and if I was gonna nail there and there, that'd be great. Except oftentimes, and I mean more than you think, that nail is gonna hit the nail that is right below, you know? Mm. And, and a lot of times they'll bend and you gotta fool with it. So I like to nail just offset. Like say maybe at the edge of the stud. And maybe even angle them You could, you could, because I know I'm I'm probably not going to hit a nail right there, and uh, that prevents hassle and headache. Good tip. Good job. Yeah. Way to go. You're welcome. These top plates take a little finagling. No, John, show us what you're doing down there. He's working the end back and forth till it's flush where we're nailing it, 41. and that's going to help us to straighten this wall as well as attach the top plate, which is awesome. Work it. Work it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Is that some kind of modern art you got going on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's another wall we're gonna brace, you can see why. And I'm gonna also straighten it, so let me go side it. Yeah, uh, eagle eye it. So um, go towards the living room, just fuzz. Uh, let it back a fuzz. Good. Up next, we're gonna set a post, a temporary post and a girder. Uh, our temporary post is not as wide as our permanent post. So we're gonna offset it and then our permanent one will be centered. It's an eight by eight. There's a bunch of scribbling going on here. But it's all gonna work out. Don't you think? It all means something. Oh, no. We're gonna Dude. brace it both. both. You're gonna brace it both? Yeah. All right. Yeah, Hey, let's talk about this beam being plumb. When you're doing multiple plies like this, you should check to see that the edge of it, ours is actually off a little right oh, now, no. but we wanna to try to straighten it up. Once you nail them together, if they're leaning, and you attach them together, you will never get them straightened. So you really have from the very first one, you got to plumb it. And then when you nail your very first second ply, your first second ply, <laughs> you got to be sure they're both together straight Look up. Look at and this down. tree hugger. I mean, what's <laughs> going on? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. It could be a problem if the beam is leaning, and then we're going to butt other uh, right. our, joists. Our, our cross cuts won't butt very nice. You'll take a measurement somewhere, and then you'll cut it, and it'll be too long, or it'll be too short, or it won't fit. You, you get headaches, and uh, we're going to put hangers on this, so we need to be nice and square to the end of the board. I like that. Yeah. Here's what we're looking for on this beam being plumb, is this joist can butt in. Nice, tight fit. We will add a hanger, though. This is not the permanent attachment, just temporary. You know, the bad thing about 16 on center is you can't really turn around no, with a tool belt. I think I'm more uh, 20 inches on yeah. center, bud. <laughs> I'm landlocked. <laughs> so I'm going under. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going over. All right. My Oops, I came up the wrong way. There we go. We can see our loft edge now, and then we go out into the living room, which is gonna be a full two stories. It's gonna look huge, isn't it, Ray? So huge. So huge. Ah. And over here, this is gonna be the bathroom. What's cool is we're gonna be able to use the entire floor surface up here, because it's full eight foot walls, then a roof, whereas our last house was roof right down to there, so you couldn't use the outside five or six feet because it was not a tall enough ceiling, so be a lot of room up here. What was your best Christmas present, Jason? Mine? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Underwear? Underwear? couple of notes about our floor system here is that we have braced the front edge of this loft straight because these joists were bowed and we just want to like play it safe that we don't forget to straighten these. So we straighten them and brace them straight so they will be straight when we install the subfloor then we can take these down. Also we doubled 
this outside one on this edge here because that's gonna be a railing that'll give us something wider to mount our post to down there. And the third thing is, like I mentioned before, we're gonna get an eight by eight post over here. This is just a temporary post and that's why it's not at the end. And that eight by eight will support all of the four layers of that girder, which is good. So tomorrow, weather pending, it's supposed to rain like eight inches or something crazy. We're gonna be back. We're gonna put the subfloor down and then we can start putting these upstairs walls up, which is gonna be really entertaining. So make sure to check back for that. Thanks for building with us today and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> you trying to catch me playing with my beer? I was trying so hard. <laughs> you weren't looking a second ago. I know. <laughs> As I'm putting these braces in the trailer, the trash trailer. It reminds me of the time I actually loaded a few braces in with some trash because I just needed to move them and then I forgot about them and they got dumped into the dump and I got to the job and I was like, ah, oh, the braces, they're gone. So we had to buy more braces. So don't do that.